Today what you're going to do in tutorial um, is use that credit check sheet that you made yesterday and your transcript to help you determine what classes you are going to pick um, for your forecasting sheets for next year. So each of you should have your credit check sheet um, back from your tutorial teacher as well as your transcript to use as a reference when you're making your schedule. Each of you will have one of these scheduling sheets. If you are currently in ninth grade, you'll have the 10th grade sheet. Um, if you're currently in 10th grade, you'll have the 11th grade sheet. And if you're currently in 11th grade, you'll have a 12th grade sheet because this is your schedule for next year. If you have the wrong sheet, make sure you get the correct one. So what you're going to do is look over your credit check sheets, see what you still have left to do, and then look at your forecasting sheet and then kind of fill in the blanks of what you need for next year. Every one of these sheets has the required classes listed at the top. So all of those are kind of listed for you. There's space to choose zero period. If you're going to take one of those classes, just circle them. If you know which English class you're going to be in, circle that. If you don't happen to know, put the regular English 2 class. This is for 10th um, grade. Social studies is in there for you. Space to write in what math class you're going to take, and you're going to write in which science class that you're going to take. Um, then you will list all your electives down here, your top choices of what you really want to be in your schedule. Um, and then the bottom, there is a space to write alternative electives. And then there's also a space for you to add your personal information. You're going to want to make sure that you add your cell phone number and email if you have those, so that if something strange comes up with your schedule, that we could contact you to fix that. Um, another space here is space to write your uh, career and college goal. If you have any idea what you think you might want to do after high school, if you write that in there, that'll help Mr. Rooney and I um, check over your classes and recommend maybe some classes that would help you out in the future. If you're in STEM and M, you can write your pathway and then Mr. Rooney and I will be able to check off what classes you have done and help to make sure you get those requirements. Same thing with the honors diploma. If you want to work on that or maybe you want more information, uh, put an X in that box and we'll check over that th stuff for you. So back up to electives. This is a 10th grade sheet. All of your choices for electives are going to be listed on the back of your sheet. You can use this key in the back to help you see which classes are semester long, which are year long, and if there are any that require teacher recommendation. Um, that's indicated with the S or the YR or the TR after those classes. So for 10th grade, you're going to write in uh, a few different elective choices for each semester. If it's a semester long class, you would use one box. And if it's a year long class, you would use both boxes. An example might be uh, Spanish 2 would be a year long, so you'd write Spanish 2, Spanish 2, um, and then a semester long classes would just take up one box. Um, so after you've listed your top seven choices, it's very important that you list at least four or five, maybe even six alternative electives that you would take um, if the top seven don't work out um, quite perfectly how you want them to. So what happens once um, every student finishes this forecasting sheet? Ms. Canan takes your top seven choices, enters them into eSchool, and creates this master schedule. So a lot of you will probably have seen this if you've come in and talked to your counselor to edit your schedule. It is just when each class is offered and how many sections of each class. So your scheduling sheets are what determine what's offered in the master schedule. So it's important that you take it seriously and list what you actually want to take so that we have an accurate number of how many people want to take each class and when those classes need to be offered. And then we make the schedule um, suit your needs as best as possible. It's not going to work out 100% for everybody, but if you write in the classes that you really want, it's more likely that you're going to get what you want in this master schedule. So write your top seven choices, fill in the alternative electives. All your choices are listed on the back. That's the 10th grade sheet. 11th grade sheet is very similar. Your required classes are here. Make sure you're circling which ones you're going to take. Use your teacher recommendations for math and science, and then write in your math and science classes. Fill in your electives, alternative electives. Uh, list your contact info and then any STEM and M or honors information down there. These are all the choices for 11th grade classes. 12th grade is very similar with one small difference. Your required classes are listed, highly recommended classes, there's a little spot for that. Spot for electives, the space for alternative electives, and space to enter your information down there and then check whether you're working on STEM and M or honors. All of your choices are listed on the back. 
So for current juniors, you may be thinking, I already have three years of math or three years of science done. That means I don't need to do any more um, because I checked that all off on my credit check sheet. This is the bare minimum for graduation. I would hope that you would all aim higher than the bare minimum. It's highly, highly recommended, that's why it's listed as recommended, that you take another year of math and science, especially if you're considering any type of college. So if you're considering um, even a community college, trade school, a four-year school, any type of college, you should really consider taking another year of math. The reason is if you take a year off of math 12th grade and then go into college and try to remember how to do math, you're just going to forget a lot of your math skills and you're going to feel lost and maybe behind and maybe even have to take remedial math classes in college and I don't want you to have to spend your time and money taking remedial classes when you could just continue with your math skills here at high school. So if you're considering college, do that fourth year of math. Same thing with science, especially if you're considering a career in the science field at all, I would highly recommend a fourth year of science. Um, in the end, uh, when you end up applying maybe to colleges next year, or even looking at like trade schools, uh, they're going to look at what classes you took and how much you challenged yourself. So I really hope that all of you are aiming to be more than the bare minimum um, and challenging yourself to do something. Maybe you're not quite sure if you um, will be successful, but um, take that challenge and um, really push yourself to have something that you can brag about later on to colleges and even to scholarship committees. If you take hard classes, even if you do um, somewhat poorly in them, colleges and scholarship people are going to be more um, impressed with you challenging yourself than you just taking it easy and kind of giving up your senior year. So I really hope that you take that into consideration when you're picking out your classes. So each sheet, um, you'll fill that out, your top seven choices, fill out your electives and your alternative electives. And at the bottom of every sheet, there's a little space where you can check if you're done with your schedule or if you need to talk to your counselor about your schedule. Um, most of you should be checking I'm done because it's pretty um, self-explanatory and you should be able to figure out what you want to take and then you check I'm done when you are done. Um, if you maybe are in STEMINIM or have an honors diploma, or you really need um, a little extra help to double check to make sure that you have what you need. Uh, you can check that I need to talk to my counselor. Uh, please only check that if you really need to talk to us because if we have 200 people check that, it's going to be really hard for us to actually talk to all of you. Um, so that's what you need to do as far as your forecasting sheet goes. Make sure that you have your name really clearly printed on the top so that we know um, who you are so we're giving you the right schedule. And also write your tutorial teacher because you're going to have the same tutorial teacher every year. So if you just write that on there, we make sure that you're in the same tutorial um, class. Uh, when you're going through and you're picking out your electives, uh, if you don't know what a class is about, you really should use this curriculum guide. So every class that's offered is listed in the curriculum guide with uh, explanation of what they do in the class, what grade levels can take it, how many credits you get, if you can like, repeat the class or not. Um, there'll be prerequisites listed. Um, so example, manufacturing two. Prerequisite is you have to take manufacturing one. So that means you have to have manufacturing one done with a C or better before you can sign up for manufacturing two. So if you have not completed uh, manufacturing one, don't sign up for manufacturing two. And you can double check that on your transcripts to see what you have done and you can see what grade that you earn for all of those classes. If you want to review graduation requirements, it's listed on page 3 of the curriculum guide. And if you're working on honors diploma, you can use page 6 um, to double check to make sure you have the right number of honors classes in your schedule. Uh, and the same thing for STEM and M, the pathways are listed there, so you can double check what you have done. You can look ahead and see which classes are offered for college credit um, and sign up for those. That's especially helpful for current um, 11th graders and you can get maybe some of your college classes done your senior year and then not have to do them while you're in college. So that's really worth taking a look at. So use this curriculum guide to help you pick out your classes. Uh, you can also ask your teacher for more information about the classes if you don't quite understand something. Uh, fill this all out. Fill out your electives. Make sure you fill up as many alternatives as you can. Know that any of these alternatives might end up on your schedule. So make sure they're classes that you actually want to take. Um, and then when you're all done, make sure your name is on there. Make sure everything is 
finished, turn your forecasting sheet in with your credit check and your transcript. All of those things will go back to your tutorial teacher, um, and then we'll start making your schedules for next year.